Did you know Dobermans were actually invented by a tax collector to protect him while he was collecting taxes? can't say that I blame him. Today's episode is sponsored by BarkBox and supported by our incredible patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Click thumbs up for Piper, the two-year-old rescue Doberman, and subscribe to this channel. Hey, I gotta see over you. You're so tall. Guess what? I've got a new Teespring store with some awesome merchandise that you guys are gonna love. I'll have a link below. Today, I'm gonna show you how to teach your dog something useful. Let's see what our new BarkBox is all about this month. Oh, it's an Alice in Wonderland theme. She's lighting up for it. Will you let go, please? That's gonna be an interesting training lesson. Lesson. Look at the unique sounds and textures that these toys make. What kind of Doberman plays tug of war with a mushroom? Piper, at some point we're gonna have to film a training video. I bet these treats will get your attention. I was trying to show the camera that. All of their edibles are made in the USA and Canada and carefully selected to be healthy and satisfying. Give me that rabbit! I've been getting these bark boxes for a long time now because it's so convenient to have all this awesomeness shipped automatically to my door every month. Look how tough these toys are! Yeah, it's like having a swordfish on a fishing pole. That poor flamingo. Go. Piper. I mean, Piper likes all the things in the bark box. But if there was something she didn't like, BarkBox would replace it absolutely free. They can cater your dog's box to their individual needs, including how big or small your dog is, or how much they like to destroy their toys. They can also take into account allergy or dietary preferences for the treats, too. And guess what? You can get your dog a free BarkBox when you sign up for a 6 or 12 month subscription at BarkBox.com slash dog training. I'm gonna have a link in the description below. It can be really useful to teach your dog how to bring you things from time to time. But even if you don't need them to do that, this is a fantastic way to challenge them and to build your mutual communication together. Now teaching your dog to retrieve something is much different than fetch. See, when you're teaching your dog how to play fetch, they're chasing a moving object, picking it up and bringing it back to you and so on. But you know what? It can be much more challenging to teach your dog to pick up an item that's not a toy and that's just sitting there doing nothing. So our goal for this training session is to teach Piper how to pick up an object that's not moving at all and how to bring it to me. What do you think? Can you do it? Before you can teach your dog how to pick something up and bring it to you, you first have to show them that it's okay to bite on it and pick it up. So don't use anything too valuable at this point. Piper isn't really paying much attention to this blanket at all. So my goal is to see if I can make it really exciting and interesting for her. Try and make it more enticing. Wiggle it around, make it interesting. It might take a little bit of coaxing with some dogs, but look, she seems pretty comfortable biting it. Don't worry, the goal isn't to always have your dog play vigorous tug with a blanket or any other object they're picking up like this. We're just trying to get her comfortable with the item and let her know it's okay to grab it. We can work on softening that bite in exchange for some fun tug toy time later on. Yeah, Piper, you're definitely interested in the blanket. That's good, but that's a far cry from a proper retrieve. I now wanna see if I can set it on the ground while it's not moving at all and see if I can get her to pick it up. The best time to get your dog to pick up a non moving, boring object is right after it stops moving. Get it! Yes! Good! So she took the opportunity to jump right into it and get it right after it stopped moving. Let go. Hey, good let go right there. She's starting to improve on her let go the more we practice this. And that's what I mean. By training things like this, you're not just training the task. I mean, look how we're improving her tug and let go skills, which will translate into other aspects of training later on. And I'm still gonna make this a toy with her and let her know it's okay to tug it, just because this is a really fragile time. If I start holding her to such a high standard of pick it up gently and bring it to me, then I fear that she's not gonna be as into it. We are gonna have to work on that vigorous tug later on. Let go. It's clearly not interesting at all right now. It hasn't been interesting for many, many seconds at this point. She's completely disengaged from it as a toy. Do you see that blanket right there? Will you pick it up? Get it. Go on. She's thinking about it. All right, so this is gonna take a little bit of work. Hey, hello, hello. what's this? Yes, oh, right there. See, and just by pepping up a little bit myself and getting a little bit more interesting instead of being like, get it, get it. I'm not being boring, you know? At least to her, I'm not. Hopefully you also agree. But now it's time to phase in distance. In other words, I want Piper to get that blanket while I'm a bit farther away. But you can't just do this all at one time. You have to gradually introduce distance with more advanced things like this. When she picks it up this time, I'm gonna run in the opposite direction and then see if I can get her to follow me with the item in her mouth. Remember, dogs like to chase us if we make it fun. Oh, no, you forgot your blanket. What I'm really trying to communicate to her is, hey, after you pick that item up, come and find me. The trick here is to keep all the training action up close and only gradually extend the distance as she steadily improves. The best time to go for another success is right after a success. <laughs> get it. Hey, what's that? Come on, Piper, over here. Good girl. Will you get the blanket? Good, bring it to me. Now wait, will you let go? 
Whoa! You can see we're really starting to evolve this behavior to something that resembles, hey, go give me that blanket and drop it over here without destroying it. I'm gonna see now if we can get Piper to go and pick up the blanket without me having to kind of escort her there. I expect she'll be a little confused because this is a pretty big step. Go get the blanket. Okay, so she's gonna chew on it. This is particularly challenging because I'm way over here and she's way over there. Piper, bring it to me, come on. Piper, Piper, Piper! This is one of the fun things about training like this. Can I motivate her to pick that blanket up and bring it to me without me touching her or forcing her in any way to do it? The goal here is to make her want to do it. Come here. Yeah, yeah, good. Good job. Just by shortening my training bubble with her there and getting a bit closer, she was more motivated and enthusiastic about bringing the blanket to me. She's got that habit of going up there and lying down. So what that tells me is I am indeed working too far away. I need to do this a bit closer. Throughout all of your training, always be prepared to take steps back and kind of repair things as necessary in different situations. That's really a normal part of teaching dogs. I'm gonna ask her to do it up here, but when she goes to pick up the blanket, I'm gonna go way back there. Get the blanket. Come on. Right there, do you see that? Piper, over here, come. Yes, there it is, I'll take that. So this whole time we've been using this blanket as a currency here. So she would go and pick it up, I'd play some tug of war with her, and that's all fine for introducing the concept, but we want her to pick it up a bit more gently. So I've still got to reward her. What are we to do? I'm gonna transition the reward into a game of tug of war with her. See, over time, rewarding like this will help me tame her bite since she's going to learn that she'll get an outlet for more enthusiastic tugging the more delicate she is when she picks up the item that I'm asking her to retrieve. That's why you've gotta practice this a lot so that you can find and heavily reward instances, even if they're accidental, where your dog handles the objects delicately. That could take dozens to hundreds of attempts, depending on a lot of factors. She clearly identifies right here that the tug toy is something she likes to play with. So I have to show her this whole concept of biting this more delicately, letting go of it, and then biting this vigorously so that it's worth her while to do stuff for me. This is how I reward her. I'm getting her into this. All right, let go. Let go. Yes, good. And I showed her the tug toy. I'm gonna let her know this one's okay to bite. Get it, come on, get it. If you, no, nope, no ma'am. If you want this, you've got to get me that. Leave it. You can see she's really fixated on this, so I've got to get her interested in this. And she's saying, no, I don't want that. I want that tug toy. So I'm going to put this out of sight for just a second. Piper, give me that blanket. Come on, bring it to me. Now check this out. What's this? Right there. Good girl. This we can play tug with. Piper, go and get me the blanket, please. Come on, bring it to me. What's this? There it is. She's so good. I love this dog. How about teaching her to retrieve some slippers? You can see if I say, get this slipper, she's not particularly interested in that. Let's see if I can get her interested. Hey, what's this? Get it, get it. It's okay, go on. Yeah, there you go, right there. She's like, wait, I know what you're doing now. Yes, good girl, good. Okay, wait, easy. I actually don't want her to be so rough with these straight away. If she picks it up, I'm gonna grab that tug toy and immediately reward with the tug toy. Get it. Yes, get it, go on, good, good. Okay, let go, good, yes, get it. Okay, let go, yeah, good girl, good job. All right, let go. Okay, ready, get it, get it, get it, yes, go on. Yeah, let go, you want this? Yeah, good, good job. So. Now that she's understanding this general concept, I feel more confident about encouraging a softer bite with something new in exchange for this more vigorous bite over here. Get it, bring it to me. Let go, yeah, oh man. Go and get me a slipper. Come on, come on, let go, yes. I mean, you can see the light bulb going off right now in that very intelligent brain of hers, but I'm still one slipper short, let go. Will you please go get me that slipper? All right, so she's a little confused. I'm not going to insist that she just do it. I'm gonna shorten my training bubble over here. And see, now the action between me, the slipper, and her is closer. I think she's more likely to pick it up now that everything's closer together. Good, yes, come here, let go. Good girl, that's it. It would be really awesome if I could get her to go get one slipper at a time, bring them to me, and then reward. So that way I'm rewarding for two successes with one reward. And that's how you start to intermittently reward. Eventually you don't have to reward excessively at all. Piper, go get me the other slipper. Come here. 
Will you get me this other one? Bring it to me. Good. Come on. Oh, look at that, both of them. How about that? Oh, you're so great. Here you go, take your reward. Let's see if we can teach her how to get her own leash. Piper, get your leash. You see how dogs don't generalize this concept from object to object very well. That's why it's really important to work with them on lots of different objects in different settings and environments and really do that a lot if you're committed to teaching something like this. So this time I'm gonna try and reward her with treats and this should change the dynamic a little bit. Yes, good, right there. So I, you know, I'm kind of pushing her around and playing with it. Good, good, let go, yes. Good, so I wanna let her know that amount of pressure is what I'm looking for, so I'm interrupting it with a treat the moment I'm, I'm satisfied with the level that she's tugging on it. Come on, come on, come on, bring it to me. Piper, yes, there it is, good girl. It could take three to five training sessions just to get this far, so don't be discouraged if your dog doesn't pick it up quite as quick. Click thumbs up for Piper if you think she did a good job today. Get your free BarkBox when you sign up for a six or 12 month plan. I'll have a link in the description. Subscribe to my channel, pick up a copy of my book and check out our new Teespring store too. I promise you we're gonna have some stuff in there that you're gonna love.